as we know, we will be observing the Lord's table after the sermon today. And it is our practice and our purpose and our endeavor to focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his death. Today I want to set before you some aspect of our Lord's life and death. Something perhaps you haven't necessarily singled out in your study or reading or thinking. But it comes across very graphically in the accounts of our Lord's life and death. And it is this, it is Christ's inflexible tenacity of purpose. Christ's inflexible tenacity of purpose. Now, I want us to turn to Romans chapter 5. And verse 17. Paul the Apostle says, For if by the transgression of the one death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. So then, as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through the act of one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. And I want to call your attention to that word, obedience. Through the obedience of the one. Who's the one? It was Christ. And we'll be, we'll be considering the obedience of Christ in his life. in his death. And I trust that we will see as we do that what we referred to earlier and that is our Lord's inflexible tenacity of purpose. There are several passages of scripture that indicate to us that Christ was consciously aware of the fact that his death was his, his supreme act of obedience. And that death captured a life of obedience. And that act of obedience in his death was in fact to be come and to be the righteousness of those whom he came to save. So we're going to think for a moment on this. His death was his supreme act of obedience. Of 
our Lord suffered untold agony. And he did it willingly. Think of this. Suffering in and of itself is not necessarily obedience. A man may suffer and at the same time be disobedient. commentator by the name of George Smeaton wrote these words. But when he encounters suffering with his full consent and events it's during the course of it, a steadfast and inflexible tenacity of purpose that cannot be turned aside from the straight path of obedience. What is that active fulfillment of duty or observance of the divine will, but patience. Patience in the highest degree. The scriptures describe our Lord's inflexible tenacity of purpose. It was seen early in his ministry and it came about when the days were approaching for his ascension that he resolutely set his face to go to Jerusalem. What is that? Dear ones, that is inflexible tenacity of purpose. It was seen throughout the entirety of his life and ministry. It was always evident that he came to fulfill his father's will. Cost what it may. And it did. It cost him throughout his life. Time and time and time again. But ultimately and supremely in his death on the cross. The Garden of Gethsemane. is a manifestation of his inflexible tenacity of purpose. And in Matthew we read, And he went a little beyond them, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will. Here's the tenacity of and flexible tenacity of purpose in these words. Yet not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see, we've been talking about obedience. Obedience must be tested in order to prove that it is true obedience. Sometimes it is proven or tested by restraint. Other times it is tested by endurance. How is it tested by restraint? Adam's obedience was tested by restraint. We read in Genesis, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but, here's the restraint, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for on the day that you eat from it you shall surely die. There's the restraint.
And in Romans, Paul writes, So then, as through one transgression, there resulted condemnation to all men. Ah, even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. Dear ones, Christ's obedience was tested by endurance. And we read about it in Hebrews. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of their eternal salvation. And we know, do we not, because Christ was the representative and substitute of those whom he came to save, his obedience resulted in their salvation. The many will be made righteous, as Paul wrote to the Romans. You see, dear people, the great commandment which was laid upon our Lord was to die. Just as the commandment which God laid upon Adam was to abstain. And the prophetic words concerning Christ found in Psalm 40 and verse 8 are very revealing. Listen to this. Psalm 40, verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is within my heart. Descriptive of our Lord. And what does that give us to understand? Those words that we just read, I delight to do thy will, thy laws in my heart. Dear people, that's inflexible tenacity of purpose. Commitment calls to what it may. I want us to consider the words of Christ. And if you will, turn with me to John 14. John 14 and verse 30. Our Lord says, I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Follow closely. But that the world may know that I love the Father, And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Look at these words. Arise. Let us go from here. What is that? Inflexible tenacity of purpose. Arise, let's get going. And he knew what that meant to the fullest extent. Those words reveal his readiness, his commitment, his tenacity to that purpose of the Father's will. To offer himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Our dear Lord demonstrates for us a quality that we should have in our life, especially when it comes to the things of God. Again, again, Christ's inflexible tenacity of purpose is expressed in John 14, 31. But that the world may know 
that I love the Father, and, and as the Father gave me commandment, arise, let us be going. <clears throat> Go from here. <clears throat> it's as if Christ is saying, under no circumstances will I turn back. His face was set like a flint. And Jesus intimates that he was about to render himself to the impending sufferings with his full consent. And he adds that he did so in order that mankind might know that he both loved the Father and was unreservedly complying with his commandment. There are other words of our Lord which reveal that God the Father loved the Son because he willingly laid down his life for those whom the Father come to give him. Christ demonstrates the highest act of obedience when in obedience to his Father's will he willingly he willingly Lay down his life. It's amazing, isn't it, how we can read the lives of other men throughout the ages, demonstrating commitment. Tenacity of purpose. Jim Elliot and others are serving with him. Five, I think, in all missionaries ministering to the savages of a jungle area, making every effort to reach these men for Christ. And they all were murdered by savages. Jim Elliot on one occasion said he's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. What does that tell you about Jim Elliot? Commitment. Tenacity, a purpose. He knew what he was doing. He knew what the cost more than likely would be. Read his diary and you'll see time and time again it's indicating he pretty well had it figured out. He would die young. Martin Luther. Here I Stand. I can do no other. Tenacity of purpose. And I would pause a moment in our progress of our sermon just to simply lay it upon our conscience. Where is that quality of tenacity of purpose? In our own walk with God day by day. It's not hit and miss. It wasn't with Jim Elliot. It wasn't with Martin Luther. It certainly was not with our Lord. We have a lot to think about. We have a lot to admire as we come to the Lord's table today when we think of our Lord. Just stated differently. We need to follow the example of our Lord. 
which in most cases will not lead to death. And of course death is coming. But I mean like Jim Elliot or like others. I want us to think next as part of this tenacity of purpose. Let me word it this way. Christ conscious offering himself that his people might be sanctified. Turn with me to John 17, 19. We're studying the Lord's intercessory prayer in Sunday school. And notice these words. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in the truth. Here, Christ speaks of his atonement as that which sets apart his people as a holy people. And dear ones, do you not see the appropriateness of that as we come to the table? We're celebrating the Lord's death. Are we not? What is the purpose of his death? that he might have a holy people sanctified. And if we miss that, we miss the whole purpose of this ordinance. We're celebrating that which has absolutely no meaning whatsoever if we're not committed to walk after him in a renewed commitment to holiness. And I'm going to put it very straightly. We might as well just walk out of here and leave that stuff on the table. Unless that is consciously being directed to your heart and life as we come to the table. Where's our tenacity? Where's our purpose in all of this? we might be holy. That's what it's all about. Because we read in Ephesians, we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. There it is. How much does that weigh up on our minds and hearts and life? Now, and an hour from now, and a day from now. Well, we have Christ set before us in his word. May that be our portion today as we come to the Lord's table. There's no need for us to go through the requirements. All of you know them. So may we come to the Lord's table at this time. Let's pray and then we'll have the men come. Father, take these truths and write them upon our hearts. Grip us with the truth. Awaken us. Shake us up today. to be your people, and to love you, to obey you, and to manifest tenacity of purpose as we walk out of here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.